Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the Mac Studio, the original one, and see if it's still worth buying in 2024. Now, I will definitely tell you these Macs are still not only completely worth buying, these are very good Macs that Apple made a few years ago that are still so powerful. They still have so much capability and just so much power in general that there really isn't this big of a reason to go and switch from it. Like if you still own it, I'd recommend, you know, keeping it. And if you haven't bought one yet, I would probably recommend buying one of these things too. Like these are very solid. They have a ton of capability and a ton of quality things going for them. And they definitely get a thumbs up for me without a doubt. Now, if you want to you know, hear more details about it, then we'll talk about that throughout this video. And there might be some other Macs I'd probably recommend buying on top of these things. But keep in mind, if at any point you want to buy the Mac Studio, links will be down in the description. You can get that from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of this particular Mac Studio, the exterior is probably one of my most favorite things going on for this particular Mac. Now, here's the thing. The front and the back are giving us port selections that we can basically choose from. The thing is, is that before on the really the, I guess the kind of the thing this thing was based off of, which was the Mac Mini, that particular Mac was basically giving us a little bit of a different type of experience. So that one, we were basically getting all the ports on the back side, but essentially all the other ports were on the front side, you know, like on the, you know, there's no other ports on the front side of the Mac Mini. Now in the Mac Studio, we are getting those ports on the front, which I love a lot. And that was when this, you know, Mac first came out in 2022. That was one of my most favorite things going on for this particular Mac. So on the back of this particular Mac, depending on whether you get the M1 Max or the M1 Ultra model, the M1 Max model is giving you four Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. The M1 Ultra model is giving you six Thunderbolt 4 ports. So a slight difference there too, you're just getting a little bit of a difference when it comes down to that particular side. On the other side, you're still getting an HDMI port and you're still getting an Ethernet port as well on the back side. However, on the front of these particular Macs, you are now getting, if you get the M1 Max and M1 Ultra model, you're getting two USB Type-C ports on the front of this particular model. So that is another very cool thing that you have on the capability on the front side. Now, I don't think the front ports are Thunderbolt, but it's still perfectly fine. You can still you know, use this Mac whichever way you want to. That in and of itself is another crazy thing. But my favorite thing about this Mac on the exterior is having that SD card slot. This is again by far one of my most favorite things going on for this particular device because you can once again easily just go ahead and dock this thing as you normally would and you can just you know without having to go and have a dongle that switches up to the front you don't have to worry about your monitor having you know another USB type C port or whatever the case is you can just have that SD card slot right in the front and this is by far once again one of my most favorite things going on for this particular Mac Whenever I, I mean, that's why I switched over to the M1 Pro Max because, you know, the Pro model MacBooks are now giving you those SD card slots. This is a game changer. It's funny because it's such an old IO to have, but I'm glad they added it back in. And once again, it's one of my favorite things going on for this particular device. So this in and of itself, without a doubt, it definitely gets a thumbs up for me, without a doubt. Now, on top of that, with the M1, you know, the, whether you get the M1 Max or M1 Ultra model, keep in mind, the performance is still going to be very, very good between both, but you are getting more ports on that M1 Ultra model. So that more expensive model that you're going to be getting, you are basically going to be getting a more expensive of, you know, Mac. So keep that in mind. You're getting more ports. You're getting a lot more stuff going on for that particular device too. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. But beyond that, you're still getting a very good relevant performing MacBook or relevant performing Mac on both of these devices when it comes down to it. So this in and of itself for sure gets a thumbs up for me. The only other thing I've heard some people complain about is that there was not like a different color or like a different option you can kind of choose from for these particular Macs. But the same thing can be said about the Mac Minis as well. Like the Mac Minis also aren't giving you any other color options to choose from either. And I think these things are more closer to a Mac Mini than they are like an iMac or something like that. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there too. Now, in terms of the other side, in terms of software longevity and how this thing kind of compares against the other Mac, really the only reason I would go and upgrade to the other Mac Studio, like the more current one, is if you wanted to go ahead and basically like get a longer lasting Mac. But the thing is, is that these M style MacBooks or these M style Macs and iMacs in general are going to be lasting for a long, long time. Like these particular Macs aren't really going anywhere anytime soon. And that is kind of the big advantage. So like when you're going through and buying one of these types of Macs, you're going to be getting a very, very good supported Mac for a long period of time. And this in and of itself is going to be a very important thing to kind of keep in mind here. And personally for me, like I mentioned, if I'm going through and buying any sort of a Mac, I definitely want it to have as great of a capability for as long as possible. And these Macs are basically giving you that right there. So 
This in and of itself gets a thumbs up for me. And again, these things are going to be lasting in terms of software support for a very, very long amount of time. So from there, you don't really have that much to complain about there either. Now, in terms of the actual performance of these Macs, here's the thing. These Macs, I will tell you, from a performance side, I just don't know how much better these things can get. Because you have to remember this, you can spec out these Macs whichever way you want to. So to say that Mac Studio isn't fast anymore isn't really a, I mean, I don't know how you could say that because you could spec out this thing as high as you want to. You might be able to say in a couple years, oh, the maxed out Mac Studio is not as good as the baseline M5 Mac Studio that Apple makes in a couple of years. Maybe you could say something like that. But for the time being, even at that point though, this Mac is still going to be very fast. I gave you the example, look at the Intel Mac Pro. That's a multi-thousand dollar machine. That thing's gonna be fast for a long period of time, even when the M models came out. You even look at the iMac Pro. The iMac Pro that Apple made like one time, that particular device is still fast and that thing came out like eight years ago. Like that thing is pretty old now, but that thing still has quite a bit of power inside of it too. And that's like another big thing to keep in mind. These Mac Studios, you can get up to 20 cores of your CPU, up to 64 cores of your GPU, up to 128 gigabytes of RAM, and up to eight terabytes of storage. That right there is some very crazy specifications to have inside of your Mac. I'm currently using the M1 Pro Mac, you know, MacBook Pro, and this thing is way too fast for me. Like, I don't really need anything that's more powerful than this thing anytime soon. And to be honest, as long as my device has a, has a micro, has a SD card slot, that's all I really care about. But even then, like, this thing is probably not going to be slow anytime soon, including the Mac Studio. So if you're a basic user, if you're just doing very basic things inside of your Mac, this thing's going to be perfectly fine. If you're web browsing, taking notes, if you're just like editing photos and stuff, this thing is going to be perfectly fine. If you're taking it up a notch and if you're trying to do like very intensive work and very intensive stuff, that also is going to be perfectly fine on this type of Mac as well. That right there is also going to be like not that big of a thing to kind of complain about here because you're also going to be getting a very, very solid performing Mac. So that right there is another thing to keep in mind. And if you're doing very intensive work, like let's say you're going up a notch and you're doing very intensive stuff, that is also going to be perfectly fine with this perfect, you know, with this Mac as well. The only thing I can kind of think about is if you needed more than 128 gigabytes of RAM, or if you're getting for some reason like the 32 gig of RAM you know, model, you might want to spec it up for a little bit higher. But other than that, there's really not too many things I can look at and be upset about with this particular Mac. So when it comes down to it, I would definitely tell you the Mac Studio is for sure 100% still worth buying. And I would say this thing is still probably worth buying for the next several years. For many, many years from now, you can feel assured that if you're buying something like this Mac Studio, you're going to be getting a very, very good performing Mac. And I don't really think there's that much to worry about here from that perspective. The only other thing I'd probably say is if you want to take it up a notch, go for the M, you know, the M2 Mac Studio if you want to go for the M3, the M5, the M10 when that comes out. But these things are so good. Apple did a really good job with the first generation Mac Studios, and I still think they're completely worth buying without a doubt. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, till then.